Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session with the New York State Public Health Corp Fellowship Program. My name is Jackie Wallace from SUNY Oswego Career Services. We look forward to learning more uh, from Jennifer Heidemann today. I'm going to pass the mic over to you. We'll save questions and answers uh, for the uh, end of the program, but feel free to put them in the chat throughout. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome, and I'm happy to be here. Um, I did want to take one moment just to let everyone know that I might be hopping around in the slides a little bit. Um, this is from a previous presentation that we we did. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to introduce um, my colleague, Shirley Wild, um, who I'll let her say her role in the program. Hi, everyone. I'm Shirley. I'm a senior fellow working in the central New York region with Jennifer. Um, it's really good to be here and meet you all. I'm excited to get some info about our program out to you. Great. So what are we talking about today? So today we are talking about the New York State Public Health Corps Fellowship Program. So the fellowship program actually was um, kind of started back in 2021. Um, this was a program that the governor was really behind at the time. Um, and it really is to, um, it's looking at the public health workforce. Um, really, we we knew that with COVID, there was a lot of attention that was brought to public health in general. And we noticed um, that we really needed to have a lot more people kind of come to the table. People that were working in roles that they previously did in the health departments joined in to help um, combat COVID. So this was really a response to kind of build that public health capacity. And so one of the things that we are really focusing on is making sure that we are increasing, you know, the preparedness that we have when future public health emergencies arrive. So our goal is to recruit and deploy up to 1,000 fellows, and they would be assigned to all areas across New York State um, outside of New York City. New York City actually does have their own program similar to ours, um, but this is really focused in on every local health department outside of New York City where we're really trying to get fellows on board. So the goals of our program, like I just kind of mentioned, is really to bolster the public health infrastructure. So we really are making sure that the local health departments are um, supported and we want to bring in new talent, um, new ideas, and really being able to, again, have that workforce in place if for whatever reason, we have another, another public health emergency that arises. Um, so the other piece of this that's really important is we wanna make sure that we're educating New, new Yorkers across the state um, to really talk about the key public health efforts um, that are in your communities. Uh, a lot of times I know from my um, schooling, I uh, have my master's in public health. I was did community health uh, education prior to that in my bachelor's. Um, and I knew that public health existed, but I didn't know necessarily what kinds of opportunities were in public health. And really I would say the general public does not understand necessarily all of what public health and what local health departments really do for your communities. So the piece of this that kind of comes into play is that we also want to make sure that we're facilitating those connections among the community um, a level public health efforts and really making sure that we have these strong partnerships. So for example, um, we're here today talking to you all and we're really trying to bring in the um, higher institutes of education to really help to inform us as we move through the program. So that's another piece and another connection that we really are um, working on as we go through this program. So the fellowship um, itself and where fellows are placed are in local health departments. And so we are really seeking anyone and everyone, right? So you could be somebody who has a communications uh, background or you, know, you just graduated with a communications degree, there are opportunities out there for you. In fact, I have a few um, in our county where you wouldn't think necessarily that would be a direction you would go to or a place you would apply is a local health department, but there's all kinds of things that local health departments really are seeking um, expertise in. So really our goal is to reach out to everyone and really try to find those really great fits that really could help strengthen the local health departments. Sorry. 
my there we go okay all right so the fellowship expectations are really it's this is a true fellowship meaning it's not an internship we really are expecting a one year um, term commitment so you would be actually full time working in a health department for up to a year. Um, all fellows are paid just as a regular employee would be paid um, at the health department, and we we really are making sure that it's a good fit for you, but to keep in mind that this always brings other opportunities as you go through your fellowship. Really, I mean, the better you do, and you're really looking at those um, possibilities that are out there. Um, so the other thing that is really an essential piece of this is really to uh, help to educate on you know networking skills um, and really also to have we have a really wonderful program through Cornell University that all fellows will participate in. It is a class that really is starting to kind of talk about public health in general, every topic you could think of. Um, for those of you who have been in public health classes, they would be covering a lot of the same core material, but it really brings to home um, the exercises and the, and the um, assignments that you get really are starting to make you think about how the data, for example, would be utilized within your own health department and how projects and how implementation is based off of some of those skills that you're learning throughout um, that program. So it's a great program. You get a certificate at the end, and it's something that just really highlights, um, you know, your skill set as you move through um, to other jobs um, and opportunities. So, like I said, you're going to be assigned to a local health department. That's where most of all of our fellowships are placed. Some have actual host organizations, quote unquote, and that would be something that they would be subcontracting with, for example, a community-based provider. So some fellowships are placed at those um, sites, but you're still kind of under the local health department. The majority though, I will say is in the central New York area are all based at the local health departments themselves. Um, the, so another thing that's important here is that each fellow will have a supervisor on site, but you also will have someone called a local coordinator for the most part. Um, some of our counties have, have uh, small uh, regions, so they don't necessarily have somebody coordinating the program on site at the local health department, but you always will have the supervisor, Shirley, myself, to kind of help guide you through the, the, your year-long fellowship. And we always want to make sure that you all feel supported. So that's something that is really, I think, an advantage of having this fellowship opportunity is you have a team of people kind of helping you throughout this. Um, we also have, uh, we really encourage, and we're really building right now, is these local health um, public partnerships. So each community has its own real local public health partnership. And so we're really having the local health departments come together to really um, provide these opportunities for fellows to be able to sit in on those meetings and see how the community, uh, how the local health department works with other community-based organizations, with hospitals. Um, so you're really gonna be immersed with um, the possibility of networking as well as learning kind of how, how those partnerships form and, and what they do. Um, we also have a mentor that will be assigned to a fellow um, we have right now we're building our mentorship program. So for anyone that would like to be a mentor, um, we definitely are seeking some at this time. Um, so we would be reaching out to um, IHEs, to other local uh, community-based organizations. Some folks may be retired just recently who might be signed to you as a mentor. And the mentor component is a really nice addition because you really have somebody else to bounce things off of. Maybe stuff that maybe you won't always talk to your supervisor about you could also talk to your mentor. It also provides more networking opportunities, which is always good. Um, I'm going to skip over this part uh, because I really just want to kind of focus in on what this is about. I will tell you that there are fellows that are based, we have these types of fellowships, um, types of fellow levels. Um, this really doesn't necessarily come into play so much anymore when you're going to apply for the local health department. So don't shy off of having, you know, if you don't have your graduate, you know, to apply to a position, 
um, because it's really going to be dependent on the local health department's hiring practices. So whatever their minimum qualifications are for a job, you might think maybe in your head it's a master's level job, but really they it might be something that you have a bachelor's degree and one year of work experience. So I'm gonna I wanted to kind of throw that out there, but when you're going through the application process, you will see some of this language, but. I would encourage everyone to apply um, to any of those positions. So I kind of touched a little bit on this. I'm not going to go through it. Um, the learning, uh, this is talking about the, um, the Cornell uh, University class. Um, this is a class too that you will, we've asked all the local health departments to make sure there's time in the day for you to do this. So you're not going to be doing, um, you know, the, your job and then on top of it doing uh, five hours of work a week uh, outside of your, your working hours. Um, but this is something that is required and so we definitely had worked with our local health department partners to make sure that they build in the time for you all. And I'm going to skip through that. So we do have some other opportunities that we encourage. Um, these are supplemental trainings. Um, they are not required. We used to require them, um, but now we've we've kind of moved on from that. So these are other opportunities that you can sign up for, that you can, um, anyone really can, uh, that you would get information about um, as you go through the application process. So part of um, really the Department of Health's mission is really to make sure that we're focusing in on justice, equity, uh, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we really are working hard right now to kind of build and foster uh, committees that really are, would help to not only inform us on, on, on our program, but also to kind of bring in some of the strategies that local health departments are using as well to kind of make sure that we are addressing and, and bringing together um, and, and having these principles really be part of your experience and part of really the uh, programming that we do. So that's something too, that's another opportunity for fellows as, as well as other partners and colleagues to get involved with. So the local um, partnerships that we have, I kind of touched on that a little bit, but we're really, these are really, we're trying to connect everyone together. We really are pushing at this. We're trying to have meetings, trainings, um, gatherings, where you're really working with these partners of the um, public health community. And that can be anyone and everyone, like I said before, uh, businesses, um, hospitals, really we're trying to get as many people that public health touches to be coming together so that we have a stronger community and a stronger um, really uh, workforce to address the issues that we face. So these are, I'll skip that one because it doesn't apply to you guys. Um, talked about the mentors already a little bit, but again, they're really just going to be those professionals um, who are, you know, we're trying to identify people that have either worked in the field who are, you know, good fits for, for what you're working on as well. Um, so that's something as we move forward in the program, you would be kind of talking through with us. And also we would be kind of reaching out to you to see if the mentor that maybe is provided fits for your skill set. And if I am going over time, please someone flag me. And that. So really the application process. So I'll talk about that. Um, so the application process itself, there's two things going on here. One is that you apply to the fellowship. Um, we do have a website and I can certainly pass that around and we can put it in the chat even. Um, and that's where you would go to apply to our fellowship. Once you apply to our fellowship, your name will be then given to us, which I'm a fellowship placement coordinator. And so your application and your resume would be sent to the local health departments that are hiring. So you actually can choose up to five counties um, in the state that you would like to uh, have your application sent to. And then we go ahead and we send those applications over. We do screen them a bit. So if there is you know, a job opportunity for an epidemiologist and they have certain qualifications, then we would you know, kind of flag that for the local health department. Um, so that's the first piece of this. Once you're in the system, we would then be sending, like I said, to the, app, um, to the local health departments that are hiring. The other piece of this is that because the local health departments are the hiring entity, 
they are they may have additional components to how you would hire or how you would um, be able to uh, get an interview. So there could be you might have to uh, fill out a civil service application, for example. Some of our local health departments are actually posting on Indeed, so their positions. So then you could apply through that way. But either way, if you apply for this fellowship through the website, you would then your information be sent to these local health departments, and and if they are they are having you do anything additional, you would be contacted if you are um, one of the candidates that they would like to choose. Uh, let's see. So this is our website, um, and really it's pretty straightforward. And when you go there, you can go ahead and apply. Um, you click apply. There's a couple of components to this. You do have to upload a resume. We ask for what at least one professional um, recommendation letter. And uh, we also um, are going to ask you a series of questions that you would then um, fill out so that we can kind of gauge your interests as well as your skill set. Let's see. All right. I think that's all I have. Um, that was very brief. If there is any other questions or other things that you would like me to touch on um, right now, I can go ahead and do that. Wonderful. So I'm going to hit stop on the record and then we can open it up for a Q&A from our audience as well.